So in the last video, we created a image folder dataset. Now what we can do is we can actually look at some of the data. So we can access some of the data as we would do with the list. So this actually allows for list slicing. What we're going to do is train data zero. Now what train data zero actually returns is a tuple. So let's see, I could actually just copy this. Create a new cell. So if we look at type train data zero, it will return a tuple. Module object is not callable. So I think, let's see. All right. Let me, I think I forgot something. Run, run. Okay, I forgot the transforms. I think that's where the problem is. 44 ants B. Uh, let's see. Get that, that. All right. So now let's run this. Okay, so now it's no problem. I had forgotten a cell actually. All right, so type uh, train data zero, which is a tuple. And now if we do this, you'll see it's a tensor, torch tensor. So basically, if you want to access a certain point, um, we use train data and we could uh, access a certain data point using an index. So it's basically similar to list slicing. And if we do one, this is actually going to be a tensor as well, I think, but this will be the label. Okay, it's an int, so this will be the label. So zero is the zero data point, and then we're accessing the, the tensor or the label. So once again, uh, each data point holds the uh, array, the image array, and the label. So each data point holds the image array, which we fit into the model, it's normalized, and the label, which will also fit into the model. So the image array is actually transformed using the transform, resize to tensor normalize, and it's transformed into a tensor, and the label, in this case, it's an integer. So e each data point has a label and a tensor array. So if you want to access the zero data point, which is going to be um, basically this uh, zero point, it's going to be this converted into a tensor and a label, which is just this label. All right. Hopefully that's not too confusing, but these are some of the basics of deep learning. All right, so we can look at the shape. So as you can see, the tensors have been resized to uh, 24, 24 by three. Now the way that Torch handles images is that instead of being the height width uh, channels, it does channels first. So it's channels, height, width. And this does not work with uh, matplotlib and I think some of the other uh, plotting uh, libraries. So you have to sort of switch around. You have to convert it into 24, 24 by 3 if you want to plot it, which we can easily do with transpose. So that's the data point. Now the label you'll see is just uh, a single integer. And in this case, the label is zero. And now we're going to look at the data. So this is going to be pretty large, but we'll look at the zero point, the zero data point, we'll look at the array that we're going to feed into the model. So this is how it looks after normalized. So as you can see, the numbers have been converted from 255, instead of being from zero to 255, it looks to be from negative 0.73 to maybe two, I'm not sure. Remember we did that uh, sort of formula with the averages and standard deviation. So it converted the numbers into this format. And this is the format that's used for all ImageNet models, or this is the, the pre-processing format. So you don't really need to worry too much about this because uh, PyTorch handles everything uh, behind the scenes. All right, so what we can do now is we're going to convert this back into the original image. And here you'll see the actual formula that's being used. So we're gonna take this data point and convert it back into an image and try to plot it. So we have train data zero, zero, which is going to be accessing this uh, array and two NumPy will convert it back into NumPy. So we have a PyTorch tensor and we need to convert it back into NumPy because a PIL or matplotlib doesn't understand PyTorch tensors. So we convert it into NumPy and this transpose is going to switch around the channels and dimensions. So earlier I had explained this uh, 3, 224, 224, we need to sort of flip it has to be 224, 224, 3. So that's what this transpose is doing. It's moving this 224 from here to here. So basically the zeroth element is going to be the first element here. And the second element, the first element, 
will be this element here, and the the third element, the channels, will be represented by the zeroth element of this. So uh, if it's a little confusing, don't worry too much. Basically, this just converts it into 224, 224 by 3. So now the mean and standard deviation. You should remember this from normalization 0 0.8, uh, 485, 0 0.456, 0 0.406, and the standard deviation as well. So these are the numbers. These are the means for each channel, the blue, green, red of all of the image net data, and that's the standard deviation. And this was the formula that was used. The earlier formula was the sample image minus the mean divided by standard deviation. So now we're doing the opposite. We're adding the mean and multiplying it by standard deviation to get back the original numbers. So don't worry too much about this. Um, then you have clip, which just makes sure the numbers fit between zero and one. But I think uh, my plotlib does that by itself. Once again, don't worry too much, but this is just a simple formula to convert this back into the original image and then we'll just plot it and you'll see it looks like an ant, basically. If we try to plot this one, it will not look anything like this. All right, so that is just a quick way to take your pre-processed data and convert it back into normal data so you could see where your model's making mistakes. Yeah, once again, this might be a little difficult for you guys that are beginners, but don't worry too much about this code. I want you just to get a general overview of the uh, data process. So we have our train data, which is an image folder data set. Now what we need to do is feed it into something called a uh, data loader. But before we do that, I'll just create two separate, uh, let's see, transpose transforms.compose. So let's just get rid of this. See, I just had recently name clashing apparently. You gotta be careful what you name your things. So seems to be some sort of a uh, name clashing. Here we go, transforms and then transforms.compose because I imported transforms as well. So this was a terrible name. Uh, we had just had name clashing, which I should avoid. But for this tutorial, I guess that's okay now. Uh, we'll just convert this to transforms and this as well. All right, so we'll run this, run this. Okay, now we created two separate ones, uh, train data and validation data. Now, once you've created your data sets, remember these are image folder data set objects, you need to feed it into a data loader. And all the data loader does is it shuffles the data and it creates batches of it. So the image folder is actually the main source of your data, but the data loader just randomizes it and creates batches. And the reason why we create batches is because we can't, if the data sets are large, we can't feed the entire data into our model. So we have to create batches and we like to randomize it. And what data loader, this data loader does is it uses um, multiprocessing. Now, if you're on Windows, multiprocessing actually is a very complicated process compared to uh, Linux and Ubuntu because it actually creates multiple copies of the shell or interpreter and it tries to share data between uh, multiple Python processes. And the way to cleanly do that is just is to use if name equals main. So anything that you is going to utilize uh, multiprocessing, you have to put it under the if name equals main block because that is how they, if I'm not mistaken, share the data. I'll have to look into more details of the multiprocessing, but basically you have to be careful. If your code is not working and getting a strange error, you have to put the data loader, anytime you access the data loader, it has to be under if name equals main. Um, there's actually a huge sort of explanation on the PyTorch tutorial, about a paragraph long. It's not that huge, but if you're having trouble, you can always turn off multiprocessing by turning the number of workers to one, if I'm not mistaken. I don't think it's zero, but convert it to one and the error should be going away. In this case, it works. I'm not really sure why there's no problem here. I did have a problem on my other PC uh, with the multiprocessing. So you have to be careful of this, especially if you're on Windows. You can convert it to one, or you could put the code that's accessing the data loader, data loader to be under uh, if name equals main. All right, so with that, I will run this. Now we have created a data loader. So basically this is just taking the earlier data and creating batches of it that's shuffled. Now with this uh, a data loader, you have to first turn it into an iterator using uh, iter, and we'll call it train loader. Now we can access the data or the batches using next. So if we use next, we will get X and Y, and we can look at the shape. Since our batch size is four, we'll get a torch 
that's a size four, three, two, two, four, two, two, four, two, two, four. So basically we have four images in each batch and we have four labels. So instead of being an int now, this is going to be a one dimensional vector containing four data point labels. And then we'll print Y and we'll see it's a tensor with uh, four different uh, labels, zero, one, one, one. So as you can see, it's been uh, shuffled. Shuffle equals true because it's, instead of getting zero, 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 it's been shuffled with ones and zero. So this was a quick overview of how to create a data loader in PyTorch. This is what we need, this train loader, to actually be able to feed data into the model. So this was the data preparations. Now, for those who are not, who are not familiar with deep learning, this will probably seem really confusing, and I probably haven't explained everything as much as I should have, but this video is just a quick overview of how to load data or prepare data in PyTorch. And that was my point, just to let you guys know how to prepare data to feed into PyTorch models. So I was hoping some of you guys will have some of the basics of deep learning. Uh, with that said, that will be the end of this video. I will then show you in the next couple of videos how to take this data and actually train it on a model. All right, I'll see you guys in the next video.